June 15, 2010. Will you please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time I'd like to introduce the board members starting on my right. Hi, I'm uh, Todd Turner. Scott Kilgore. Gary Willis. Nancy Klesnarski. Walt Rika. Has everybody had a chance to look at the May meeting minutes? We need a uh, motion to approve. Second. That's you were second. No, I can't. Discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed the same. Let it be known and pass four. I'm abstaining since I wasn't here. Nelson says he was out of town. At this time, we would like to present petition number V10-005 to allow an accessory structure, a barn to be located in the front yard. Angela, if you would please, please present. We would appreciate that. Petition number V10-005-13580. Requested variance to allow an accessory structure or barn to be located in the front yard. The site, 13580 Hopewell Road, is zoned AG1 and includes an existing single family home which sits on 20.81 acres. The property is located in the northwest Fulton Overlay and is bordered by single family residents to the west and east south. The existing residence is scheduled for de demolition. The applicants propose to replace, to replace it with another residence, a six-stall barn and a riding are arena disturbing approximately 5.78 acres. The proposed house is located approximately 810 feet from the street, and the proposed barn is located approximately 450 feet from the street. The barn meets the requirement for any building housing animals to be located 100 feet from any property line. The applicants, Doug and Janice Edmond, state that the property's existing streams and ponds and their required setbacks eliminate any usable space behind the site of the proposed home. According to the PERC test and Level 3 soils test, the options for a suitable location for the septic system are very limited. The southern side of the property is hampered by a lake and stream and their required buffers. The location for the septic system is limited to the northern side of the house, which precludes placement of the barn there. Based on existing topography and having explored multiple grading options, the applicants state that the current proposed location for the barn offers the best alternative for minimum grading and land disturbance, as well as water quality and erosion control management for the site. Section 64416I of the City of Milton Zoning Ordinance states that accessory structures may be located in rear or side yards. The Edmonds state that the only location suitable for their barn is the front yard. Therefore, a variance is required. Design Review Board Courtesy Review. A courtesy review was performed by the City of Milton Design Review Board on June 1, 2010. The board offered the following comments. The barn looks aesthetically nice. The barn needs a cherry on top, some sort of weather vane or finial relating to the family to top it off and stick with muted natural colors. Additional department comments. The staff held a focus meeting on June 1, 2010 at which the following comments were provided. Building plan review, site plan review, no issues. The arborist, construction will be well away from any specimen trees. The entrance along the northern property line should not be used for construction vehicles. DOT, no issues. Standards for consideration. Relief, if granted, will not offend the spirit or intent of the ordinance. 
there are such extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property that the literal or strict application of the ordinance would create an unnecessary hardship due to size, shape, or topography or other extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions not caused by the variance application, applicant. Relief, if granted, would not cause a substantial detriment to the public good and surrounding properties, and that the public safety, health, and welfare are secured, and that substantial justice is done. The applicant addresses the considerations as follows. The applicant states that relief, if granted, would not offend the spirit or intent of the ordinance. Where the house is located would pose an undue hardship because of the existing state waters buffers, thus limiting the usable space to place the barn. Relief, if granted, will not cause a detriment to the public good and surrounding properties. The public safety, health, and welfare are secured, and substantial justice will be done as well. Recommended conditions. Should the board choose to approve the application, staff recommends the following conditions. One, the barn should be finished with muted colors. Um, and actually, I would like to add one more condition, and that is that the north entrance um, will be closed to construction vehicles uh, during the construction process. And this concludes the staff presentation. Any questions from the board to the staff? Uh, yes, Angela, did they submit any s soil studies that would verify the problems they had with uh, septic beyond this plant here? Did they actually show the report? Not to me. Um, I believe that they've submitted for land disturbance permit, so I'm pretty sure all of that went with that, but not for the variance. Okay. And then uh, on these uh, buffers, the impervious and uh, city buffer and state buffer, are those all the correct dimensions? For these buffers shown in the plans, it shows a 25, 50, and 75 around the lakes, as well as the creek that goes through. Um, this is the same site plan they submitted for the LDP, and this is what we reviewed. So I don't, I don't re recall any additional comments concerning the buffers. I just want to make sure that those are the some of the limiting factors are saying that's causing a problem with their case. They are. So. They're, as far as I know, they're shown correctly. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, on both the plan and the uh, topographic map, there's two parcels in the front. Uh, on both of those, the northern parcel doesn't show a building, but when I was out there, it looked like there was a house there as well. Or maybe, maybe that's it underneath on the topographic map, which is hard to see. I just want to verify there is a house on that northern parcel, northeastern parcel? Um, I'm not sure if there is or not. If I recall correctly, the Edmonds don't own that northern parcel, but they do own the southern one. So that's probably why it's shown like that. The southern one with the, with with the, the house, house, and that's the house that's going to be demolished. Any other questions for staff? At this time, will the applicant please come forward to present their application? And if you will, when you come forward, please state your name and address. <clears throat> hey, my name is Steve Lavota. Uh, my address is 13825 Ripple Road. Why don't you go ahead and make your presentation, and then I'll, we have a time when we can ask sure. questions, and I'll do it then. Um, pretty much, Angela has, uh, as she has already read in the record, uh, are the conditions that currently exist. There are two um, bodies of water sitting on the rear of the property that currently exist. Um, and within um, just to the front of the property, one of those two bodies of water, 
on the left side, there's a condition as uh, um, was already previously talked about with the string buffers that we cannot be encroached upon. Uh, I do have the level three soils we're taking up the site, uh, even though it's a 20 some odd acre site, it's extremely limited on um, where the uh, where the septic system can, can put in, and that's to the right. And in order to um, put the barn where with the topo of the said property and then all the blood forces out and do turnouts and things of that nature would require a mass regrading. And obviously we can't get into the area of the, of the state water either with the ponds or the area of stream buffers to the left and not able to obviously do so where you're going to have your septic system because if you disturb the area you no longer make that area viable for a septic system. Um, again, the, the parcel to the north is owned by uh, another uh, uh, another uh, Milton resident, um, so that's correct. And this structure, this barn structure, will sit uh, over 450 feet off of off of Hopewell Road. In front of it are some very large majestic oaks. I've had uh, Mr. Law has been off the property on numerous occasions. We will no way, shape, or form hamper or be any close to those trees, but they will be buffering really the site of the barn, even from Hopewell. Any questions for the applicant from the board? Mr. Lee, go ahead. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I dropped something. I didn't quite hear your name. And My name is Steve Laboda, L-A-B-O-D-A. Thank you, Mr. Laboda. Um, what is your relationship with the property? Are you the Designer, owner. Uh, I'm not the Mr. And Mrs. Doug Edmonds who are in in, in, in council today. Um, all the owners. I'm here representing them uh, as a, uh, a general contractor. Who, uh, they've enlisted the help of, of constructing said structures on property. Okay. Um, on the area where the barn is located, it looks like that Cecil is the type of soil in that area, and that. That area is typically okay for for uh, septic, <coughs> and then uh, at the same time, um, if the barn was on the opposite side of the road and the rain was in that hard labor area, that would get it further away from the street. Did you potentially look at at flipping that barn to the other side of the road, just out of curiosity? Um, if you're referring to the left side where the bridge currently is in place, no, sir. I'm talking about as you go. Uh, if you come in on the northern entrance driveway yes. and you go down the road and before you come to that loop that would take you back out, mm -hmm. if you looked at flipping the barn to the other side or the hard labor, which was the hard labor, in other words, if you just went like this, mm -hmm. um, uh, flipping it to the other side, did you consider uh, doing that to get it further away from the street? Okay. Um, to answer your question, no, I have not personally. Okay. Um, did not know that would be a requirement to get it further away from the street in either circumstance knew that we would have to come before the board today because it, it, it as the variant states that we have to be um, come before you if it's in front of the house and that will leave us in the same frontage um, but in order to get the riding rink um, uh, with the barn where they wanted to we start getting close to having a barn within 100 feet of property and that caused another problem with the with joining residents. Well, the reason I ask that is because that area that is opposite looks like you could get it kind of towards the back of the house and possibly even fit the barn back there and maybe put the ring in front of it. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to, you know, make sure I, I understand um, what, what caused the problem with moving it from one area to the other, because both areas look like grade is about the same either way, and, uh, and I'm just trying to understand uh, why that wasn't a possible consideration. And maybe you have to ask the owner um, why they they chose that location, because I, I guess um, uh, I've got to look at why alternatives weren't considered. Mr. Rico, could you clarify? Are you talking about sure. moving the barn west? I'm talking about taking the barn to the other side. Let me just make sure I hold it up. Yeah. Give me a 
So I'm basically saying taking the barn from barn and ring here, and, and if you don't mind, I'm just going to make a big old circle mirroring it to the other side. And I'm talking about just putting it right there. I'm just you trying still to be able to maintain the hundred feet from the property line. Is that? I, I think they would because it, it would be no different. And uh, at the same time, uh, it would also possibly be closer to being behind the home or at least parallel to the front of the home. And I'm, I'm just asking the question. I'm not saying that I'm necessarily saying they have to or consider it, but I'm, I'm just trying to understand why one area was considered over another. Uh, uh, so that, that, that's my question. If you can't answer it, say that, you know, Check the note box. So, if Mr. Edmonds would like to come sure. up, by I all will means. tell you why he's coming sure. up, sir. That um, Mr. Stanhope is a soil scientist along with Sam Asadi. But we have gone out there on numerous occasions to try to facilitate. So, in that area you're referring to as an example, even though, in fact, your original question is about the soil types, even though the soil types identified can be suitable for percolation, does not guarantee them so. And we've had numerous failures on site, even within the soil type you've asked about. Well, everything I've talked about has nothing to do with the septic field for the home. Uh, now, there may be a necessity for a septic field for the barn, because I imagine you may have a restroom or, or uh, um, something uh, like a shower or whatever. But uh, I, I'm just asking the question. I'm not trying to, you know, I, I just think I, I have an obligation. To make sure I understand why we're, we should be granting this, we've got a beautiful piece of land, by the way, and a great plan. I, I just feel like I need to ask that question. My name is Doug Edmond, and together with my wife Janice, we own the property uh, in question. Um, as I understand, your first question is: Were other alternatives considered? The answer is yes. Many, many were considered. Um, so I'm, I'm couldn't quite visualize from sure. back there what you were. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so again, please. where the circle is is where I'm, I'm wondering why the barn and riding ring weren't moved to that location, and that way the barn could possibly be slightly behind the front setback of the house and at the same time uh, you know, meet the intent of the ordinance to some degree uh, without being so close to that house in the front. I guess I'm, I'm always worried that, you know, what's the impact to this person up here? I don't know if you have a letter from them. I hope you do, um, stating that they have no problem with what your plan is. Okay, well, I'll address that last part sure. maybe later. But um, okay. for now, in terms of uh, what we've laid out, um, again, relative to all the different alternatives we looked at, uh, this was what we thought suited the property in terms of what it offers, one of which is the beautiful beautiful bodies of water. Uh, with the location of the home where it is, you are fully taking advantage of that. Um, because of the slope of the property, you're not likely, I don't believe, to see that home from Hopewell Road, but uh, I'd have to see sort of the horizontal. Um, and then certainly with where the positioning of the barn and the riding arena are, um, I think that's even more likely to not be vis visible from the street. That property that I think you all are referring to as the north section or north property is heavily wooded um, such that if you're standing roughly where the uh, arena or barn are, you really have, at this time of year, it's hard to see that house. It's, it's so heavily wooded. So for us, it seemed like that was a good compromise in the sense it meets the uh, offsets or whatever that are required in terms of being away from the property lines. Um, also, uh, I mentioned the bodies of water, how beautiful those are, and being able to take advantage of that with the home. By having it set out this way, of course, from the front of the home, you also have the beautiful barn and pasture in front of you as well, potentially horses riding around. Um, and, and yet, it's also, again, offset from the street so that really they're it seems to us that it would be far enough off that it's not really a, a burden or even noticeable from the street. Um, to your last point of having a letter, uh, I don't believe we have a letter. Do we? 
yeah, we posted to the street, you know, on the street address and everything, but I don't have a written letter. I, and I apologize if that was a requirement. I was unaware. Um, I think the only reason I mention that is it's just good friendly policy to oh. talk to your neighbor. Maybe you already did that, and you may not have gotten a letter from that, but hopefully you've spoken with them. Yeah. Um, in terms of this specific plan as it is, no. Um, but I totally agree with you. That is a good neighborly policy. So in terms of the features, if you were, you know, looking at the plan with me, as you come off of Hopewell Road, you have the road, you know, or drive access, and then again, as the way the layout of the land is, it's a bit of a dip down. You can see that uh, creek bed that's in there with a bridge. As you're crossing that, you have a beautiful view then of the barn, and then as it turns away from the barn, you now visually would be seeing the home. It just seemed to us that it was really taking advantage of, you know, the features and the topography of the land and uh, to its best. And, and then I think the point that Steve was making earlier, um, and Angela I think was reading regarding the septic and the soils tests. Um, I, I saw where you sort of pushed, showed the barn over there. That's I think that's the the best area in terms of the soils for septic. Um, I'm not certain of that. I believe that's what the, the it's test not, revealed. That's okay. It, it's not? No. Okay. It's hard labor. It's not a good soil for percolation. Well, I, I know that prior to our purchasing this property, there was a consideration for putting a school in place. And I believe there was a complete soils test of this whole area. <laughs> and it overall did not do well. Sure. So I can understand that. For the amount of field they need, that would be much greater. Um, I, I need to ask a question because the person you're going to impact the most with your accessory building isn't really the street as you mentioned but it's your neighbor that's the northern neighbor and they're the ones who are most impacted and for that matter um, Mr. Garnett as well um, I'm not sure where his house is in relationship to that if he even has a house but uh, that looks like the next one that would be kind of parallel and uh, so I'm just trying to make sure that if we are, um, you know, looking at this and, you know, this is, you know, we've got to come up with a good reason. I know you say septic, but it doesn't look like that location is a bad one because of septic. It, it's not impacting your, your ability to leave the house where it is. You get the barn much closer to the house and uh, for that matter, the riding ring, which may not be the best thing, especially if people ride at all hours. Um, but... Um, I just I would feel more comfortable if I knew some of the adjoining owners were a little bit more comfortable with this. I mean, uh, for well, well, we'll get to public comment. Sure, sure. Can I comment? We'll we'll get to that a public comment if you'll just. Well, my, I'm not a public. I'm just you, you certainly because you don't name. Talking to this. Sure, just bend it down. Yeah. There are neighbors. I don't know my north, south, west, east here. But. North, all right. south. There's a house to the north that would be, if you move the barn, have the same impact that you're concerned about for this home. So you're just switching one concern for exactly the same. There's also homes behind the ponds that would um, view the barn and maybe that would also be your same concern that that was too close to them. There's houses surrounding this entire property, not just there. Um, and the other thing was that the grading or I, I, I might not have the right language, but you can see all the slopes in this plan. It slopes from high to low. So to save from really destroying this, you know, land the way it is laying right now and regrading it, it was the easiest place also to put it and grade the least um, because it's there's a flat section up there already. So there was lots of thought that was put into it and. There are other homes surrounding the entire lot. There are other homeowners here that could comment sure. if you'd like to. Mr. Sure. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, well, as I, as I look at your um, alternative, uh, which I think, by the way, is, is a creative one, it looks like, and I'd like the staff to comment, 
the barn needs a 100 foot setback from the side yard, is that correct? Yeah. So I just did some rough drawing, on, uh, to, not to actual scale. It looks like to maintain that 100 foot setback, we'd actually be down uh, just above where it says hard labor number one. To, that would be need to be the edge of the barn. Um, it, with that, it, it, bringing that ring would actually come literally right into where the, the proposed septic fields are. So, I, I, and if, if the requirement is to maintain that location in parallel or behind the structure, we then start running in, it looks like, to the impervious buffers at, at the rear. So although it doesn't look like they've actually contemplated this, or maybe they have in some scenario, I'm seeing it hard to actually fit that in there. I understand your, your suggestion, and I think it's a very uh, obvious question to ask, but I don't know that it's viable based on just my rough paper to scale. If it's helpful, we have just received um, back to Fulton County Health Department to engineer plans with the septic system, with the primary and the secondary, and back to um, Mr. Turner's your point, is with the writing rink, it's possible that it could encroach into that area a little bit, but if it's helpful for anyone, I do have the signed and sealed sets, if that helps in any kind of review. So, I, just, I, I think you asked a great question. I, I'm, I don't know if it would fit. Do you have any questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. At this time, we'd like to open the floor to public comment. If you would, hand your little yellow card to Angela and state your name and address before you speak, please. Or Lynn, either one. Greg Jones, and I live in the uh, property immediately adjacent to the subject property on the west side. Uh, it's in the Cooper Sandy subdivision. Uh, our address is 800 Cooper Sandy Cove, and uh, I, I was a uh, an opponent of the school that tried to go in there a few years ago. I'm very thankful about it. Uh, I, I think I could speak for a lot of the neighbors in there. I'm also the president of the subdivision's uh, home ownership association. Uh, that that we we. Encourage this kind of <clears throat> development in the area. If you look up and down the street uh, of Hopewell Road, there uh, you see a lot of properties very much like this. Some of them probably being the grandfather uh, that were approved prior to when Milton came into existence that had barns in front of, of homes. And the yellow barn is probably a pretty good example there, uh, pretty significant operation. So uh, I, I would be very supportive of any way they can make this work uh, uh, the way they have it. I haven't seen the specific plans of where things are going to be, but. I speak for, for myself and the immediate neighbors uh, at my end of the street there in Cooper Sandy, and, and we're very supportive of this project. project. Excuse me, sir. Can you clarify um, which property we have a we have an aerial view? Is it the six acre? Uh, no, it's about one and a half acres. Uh, it is. If you come down Cooper Sandy Cove, it's the last house oh. on sort of the left. On the left. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Any other public comment? At this time, the applicant has the opportunity to make a closing statement or rebuttal if you would like. Okay. This time we'd like to uh, close the public hearing. Any additional questions for staff? At this time I'd like to open the application for a motion. Mr. Recook. I'm going to go ahead and make a motion for approval to allow uh, the variance to V10-005 to allow an accessory structure or barn to be located in the front of the yard as depicted 
on BH and D's engineering plan dated um, January 20th, 2010 uh, with uh, two conditions that the barn will be finished with muted colors and number two that the northern entrance would be closed to construction traffic. My reason for allowing this is for consideration due to the uh, topographic and uh, septic issues involving this property as well as uh, trying to minimize impact to the lakes and the streams uh, that could be impacted in the northern portion where the other location possibly could have been. Second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I just want to make one comment that I don't think we really discussed and I think that this does not offend the spirit and intent of the ordinance that we're really talking about here. The, the ordinance has to do with accessory structures in the front yard. And with a property this large, it's very different from a, from a subdivision type situation. We're not talking about mm -hmm. putting a, a, a storage shed or a, or a small bar or anything like that in the front of a house in a, in a uh, subdivision. So uh, I, I, I would say in that vein also, it does not offend the spirit of this ordinance in any way. It's tucked back in behind the trees. You can't see it from the street. Um, so uh, I would speak in, in favor of your motion. Any other discussion? One more. Yes, sir. I, I, this is a, just as a side note. Um, I'm real pleased to have any horse facility and uh, being a horse person myself, I'm glad to have more in the community and love to, to see you and hope you do successful. My wife was very jealous of this property, seeing how beautiful it was. And uh, we're real thrilled to have you do this, but I can't let you get off easy asking to come in front of this board by just asking and we'll give you something. We have to make sure you earn it. And then secondly, can you please look at those lakes and make sure you please clean off any trees that are on that dam? because that will cause those lakes to fail. So be very careful. You're a steward of, of the environment and that's a, a responsibility for being a good maintenance of uh, lakes. So I wish you the best and hope things work out and hope you get the votes. A motion in the second on the floor is to approve V10-005 to allow an accessory structure to be located in the front yard for drawings B, H, and D of engineering plan is 12010 with the following conditions. Number one, the barn shall be finished with muted colors. And number two, the north entrance should be closed to construction traffic. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Opposed, do the same. Let me know that it passed five to zero. Thank you. Accessory structure a full pavilion to encroach in the minimum rear yard setback. Angela, would you please present? Petition number V10006. The site 205 Thompson Springs Drive is owned AG1 and includes an existing single family home which sits on a little over one acre. The property is located in the northwest Fulton Overlay and is bordered by single family residences. In May of 2009, the property owner submitted an application for a pool permit to the City of Milton. The permit was reviewed by staff and comments were returned to the applicant, which included obtaining a sign-off from Fulton County Environmental Health. The comments were never addressed by the applicant. Per the City Code, when a permit is inactive for six months, it becomes null and void. This 2009 permit was never issued. The City was informed that the applicant had started work on the pool on the pool, a covered pool pavilion, and extensive earth movement in the backyard, all without permits. During the inspection by the City of Milton building official, Mr. Maglio was advised that the pool pavilion was too close to the rear property line and that none of the work was in compliance with the city codes since there were, since there were no permits issued. 
He was issued a stop work order by the city on April 1st, 2010, and was given 10 days to bring the site into compliance. This included applying for a new pool permit, applying for a variance, and building permit for the pool pavilion, and stabilizing the site. As of June 1st, the applicant has not submitted an application for the pool or pavilion. The edge of the pool and the pool pavilion are both approximately 10 feet from the property line. The minimum rear yard for property zoned AG1 is 50 feet. The 20 by 20 pavilion consists of a three-sided concrete block wall and a timber framed roof. Section 64416I of the City of Milton Zoning Ordinance states that accessory structures may be located in rear or side yards but shall not be located within a minimum yard. Therefore, a variance is required for the 40-foot encroachment. Design Review Board Courtesy Review. A courtesy review was performed by the City of Milton Design Review Board on June 1, 2010. The board offered the following comments. Workmanship looks good. Um, they felt they didn't have enough information to uh, know what the structure would look like and comment on it. Additional department comments. The staff held a focus issue, a focus meeting on June 1st, 2010, in which the following comments were provided. Building plan review, no issues. Site plan review, no engineering issues. Erosion control is adequate. Arborists, no specimen trees appear to be affected by this request. DOT, no issues. The approval of a variance is based on the following considerations. Relief, if granted, would not offend the spirit or intent of the ordinance. The, and the applicant supports this by saying, the issuance of the variance would remedy the flooding of our home when we had the heavy rain in September of 2009. This caused a great hardship for our family as we received $351 from FEMA, but accumulated only over $60,000 in bills from water damage into our home and the work we have done thus far. We have been working our yard to install retaining walls and extensive drainage to protect our property from having this happen again. There are such extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property that the literal or strict application of the ordinance would create an unnecessary hardship due to size, shape, or topography or other extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions not caused by the variance applicant. Because of the way the home was constructed abnormally far from the curb, which limits our size of the yard for a pool or covered patio or pool house, considering that the lot is well over one acre in size. Relief, if granted, would not cause a substantial detriment to the public good and or surrounding properties. The subject property cannot be seen from my rear neighbor. My wife spoke with this neighbor who was fine with the work and offered, if necessary, to sell the difference in land to give us the proper number of feet from the setback. That the public, safety, health, and welfare are secured and that substantial justice is done. We are in full agreement with this. We are responsible homeowners. Recommended conditions. Should the board choose to approve the application, staff recommends the following conditions. Number one, the applicant shall obtain permits for the pool, the pavilion, and the required pool fence. You will need to submit a new application for the pool permit. Pool, permit fees for the pool and pavilion shall be doubled due to the work starting without a permit. Number two, as part of the permit process, the applicant should submit a survey accurately showing the location of the pool, the stone patio area, the pavilion, and the river rock drainage. Number three, materials for the pool pavilion shall match the existing house. This concludes the staff presentation. Any questions from the board to the staff concerning this application? Mr. Rico? Yes, Angela, I've got a question. You said as of June 1st, the applicant has not submitted an application for the pool or pavilion. Uh, I guess today's the 15th. I was wondering if that condition has changed. Not that I know of. So. So they have still not done it? Is that something you're still requiring that to be done? Well, they still have to submit a permit. Um, the submittal of the variance application, I guess, kind of stays any penalties, at least for the pool pavilion. Um, but the, the pool itself still needs, well, eventually he'll still have to submit applications for both of them. Are we able to hear this without this application being filed? Is it something maybe we should table till? They get the application in. Is that something that uh, 
is typical I mean, I or untypical? Think, I don't think they're required to submit the, the permit first. They're not? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> Question for Angela. Uh, as I read the, um, the, the requested variance wording, it, it appears that the only thing they're needing the variance for is the pavilion, right. not the pool. The pool can be built where it is. The pool can go up to 10 feet from the property line, so it's fine. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for staff? At this time, we'd like to invite the applicant forward to present. If you would, please give your name and address. Joe Maglio, 205 Thompson Springs Drive, uh, Milton, 3004. The only thing that they told me I can file a permit for since this occurred was the fence, which I did. They said I couldn't submit anything until we had the variance meeting. So that's why we held off. Um, I know I acted overzealously, but when I got back um, from a funeral with my mom, my house was flooded. And uh, I wasn't in a good frame of mind, so we started building walls. And I put part of that foundation for the pavilion was to retain that wall in that corner. As you could see from the topography, our property is substantially lower than the property uh, behind us. Uh, when we bought the house in 2007, which we thought we bought it at a good deal, it was prior to the housing crash, the house was water damaged and full of mold. So we already restored the home and I did enough drainage in the back to, you know, to take care of what I thought was the water problems, because that's the business I'm in, foundation repair and drainage. And what happened in September, I was out of town for two weeks, five days with my mom in hospice in North Carolina, and then she wanted to be buried in New York, so we were gone the whole time we had that September rain. So when I came back, I had a foot of water, over a foot of water in my home. So after we dried out the home and after we restored the home, I started working in the back and moving soil. I was under the assumption, and again, I know it was an assumption, that our pool permit in 2009 was still a valid permit. Um, and again, I didn't know. So I'll, I'll claim, you know, I, I'm at fault there. But, but at the same token, I was told, uh, even when I went in to get the fence permit the other day, that I couldn't submit any permits until we had this meeting, and either it was nay or yay. And then I could go from that point. And that's why I held off and doing any other thing. The drainage is done. Uh, we've had substantial amount of rain since that period of time, and it managed to capture all the water. And what we did was we, we put river rock and trench all around the property to divert it away from coming into the home. And then I put a main drain uh, on the surface. So as far as the drainage in the water, I think we're there. The, what we were trying to do aesthetically was to build value in the home by putting a pool and, uh, and doing a pavilion with a little kitchen in it. And uh, that's where we are at this time. My question to you is that in May of 2009, you submitted an application for a pool permit. The permit was viewed by staff and comments were returned to you, which included signing off from the Fulton County Environmental Health. So at this point, you've had to have known that you didn't turn in the right information because they actually gave it back to you with questions. I, I, I never got that. I'll, I'll stand here in front of you and tell you I never got nothing from the city of Milton. In fact, we hired a pool company to do this at first and we were about to do the construction, and I started looking at the topography and the drainage plan, and I said, there's no way. If we had a big you know, amount of water come into this yard, that pool would be uprooted. So if they sent it, they might have sent it to Blue Pools, but I never received it, because at that time I terminated the contract and wasn't going to do anything with the yard until I was satisfied that we can take care of the rest of the drainage in that, in that area. But I never received anything from no one. But if you never received anything from Milton, wouldn't you have thought that you've got to get an actual permit before you can start then if you didn't receive a thing? No, because I figured when I paid 700 and something dollars, I thought that that was the permit. And then I had to call them when I was going to start. I didn't start building the pool. 
I started doing the drainage. I never dug the pool. To this day, there's no pool. What, what business are you in? I'm in the uh, foundation repair and drainage business. So do you pull a lot of permits? We, unless we're building walls over four feet, we don't have to pull permits for drainage. Would we're, you pull permits before? I pulled, I pulled the permit when I did my home and did the repairs of my home. And uh, when you pull the permit for your home, you got a response back that said you can now start working. Well, I had a card, and I would call them when I did, when the electric was done. I would call them when the plumbing was done. But when the pool wasn't done, I never called anybody because we never did the pool. So when I started this year, when I, when I was going to start, I haven't started the pool, then I was going to call. The only thing we did was the drainage, and I used the foundation footing that we poured and the block wall for that corner to tie the block in so that water wouldn't come over the wall again. And have you built part of the pavilion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you have a permit for that? No. Did you think you needed a permit for that? I, you know, I, I was going to do it all when I filed for the permit. I, like I said, I acted overzealously because I wasn't in the right frame of mind. I was trying to get it done. We had a lot of rain period, so I couldn't dig anything anyway. Any other questions for the applicant? Mr. Rico. Uh, again, let me say I condole to you and your family for your loss of your mom. I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope things are better and appreciate you taking a house that probably had some environmental problems with it having flooded previously and fixing it and getting it back and uh, hopefully we can uh, get you uh, taken care of. As far as my point, um, did, have you got any letters from any of your adjoining neighbors saying they have no problem with what, uh, what you're proposing on this application? Yes, sir. Can we see those letters? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I've talked to them. That's one of them is the one that said if we didn't get it, he would sell me the uh, Okay. Uh, this is the one directly behind us here. Where we're in his setback in Detroit, where it's going. And this is my neighbor to the left. There is no neighbor to the right. We, we have the property that goes to the end of the So when you say neighbor to the right, when, I, when you say right, if you're you're so looking, looking at the at house, the it's on the left. Is that what you're saying? No, to the right. There's a neighbor on the left. The neighbor to the north. And there's a neighbor on behind me. He's got three and a half acres. Okay. And then the the neighbor that would be on the right, we have plenty of property on that side. Sure. He's he lives on Thompson Road. Right. Okay. We're the first house on Thompson Spring. Mr. Turning. Sure. Question. I have two questions now. There was a there's a note handwritten on the, one of the letters from Mr. and Mrs. Phillips. It says, with the understanding that the requirements will be met with regard to our property. What yeah. is that in reference? In other words, she didn't want us to go over her property line. Okay. Yeah. And that fence, by the way, we put up. We started putting it up because we got the permit for that. You know, she was very happy with it because it looks nice. We've got the finished side to her. You know. So my question is with respect to the land disturbance that you've done, which looks to be rather extensive, and, and you have, it, um, have indicated drainage work that you've done, where and how have you uh, managed your drainage issues? Where is it re being redirected to? Or yeah, redirected. To yes. The to the front yard, away from the house, diverted it away from the house. The property behind me sits up probably about, if I stand on the property ledge where the neighbor is behind me, I can, I'm, I'm equal with the roof. So we're in a big hole. So when all the water came from his property, it came so rapid and so hard, it took out the pond, it took out the block wall that we had there, and it just, it, it knocked me down. So you've redirected the, exist, the water issues to the front of your own property? Correct. Got one more question. Yes, sir. Um, do you have? You said you have a business of, of foundation waterproof, you know, and you know how important it is that you have a certain. How should I say it? Respect for procedure and policy amongst the people that you that work for you. I guess I have the same problem where I want to make sure that our folks are properly being treated. And I understand what you've told us about the permit. If we considered this and said that there had to be a deadline for submittal of all these applications for plans and, and permits and all that, and I said you got seven days to get that, you think you'd have a problem doing that? 
the answer is no. And the, the other answer is I have all the paperwork on my desk ready to go. I was just told okay. I couldn't submit anything until we had this meeting. I was told to cease and desist. And you understand, you, you, oh, yeah, you understand. were in my position, you'd say the same thing. Oh, no, I understand. I, you know, I, I wish I could have had this done, you know, right. when I moved in. I just didn't think, we already spent a substantial amount of money. I didn't think it was going to ever rain like that. Yeah, I understand. Mr. Trevor. Um, just a question. Uh, you know, obviously when we grant a variance to an ordinance, there has to be uh, reasons for wh why we're granting it. Um, you're saying the issuance of the variance would remedy the flooding, but it sounds like you've already remedied the flooding. So I don't see how there's a hardship or a, you know, we're, we're talking about putting a building within the minimum yard, you know, in, in 10, 10 feet off the line. And we have to have some justification for allowing that. Now, if there's just no place else to put it or Know, if, if there's topographic reasons, but I haven't heard any explanation or justification for why this building has to be here. Can you address okay. that? Yeah, sure. If you look at the property where the house sits, our backyard is limited. There is more property to the right of the home, uh, but the way they position the home, there is hardly any yard at all. And what I, what I said was I was using that footing and foundation to tie in my block wall so that it would resist the amount of hydrostatic pressure that came off that, that uh, top. I'm trying to catch it first and roll it to the front of my yard, but because the intensity of that rain in September, and we've been having uh, similar bouts of that, it still comes over and looks like Niagara Falls. So the block wall, it hits the block wall, and then in front of the block wall, I have surface drains that take it the same direction. So, uh, I understand. But there's the, nowhere, else, to answer your question, there's nowhere else to put the pool pavilion in, in fact, technically it should be on the left side because that's where the kitchen of my house is. We're putting it on the right side so from a kitchen of our house we have to walk to the other side to do any kind of entertaining. I guess right. that th there is really no else, uh, uh, you know, else to put a place to put it. If we put it way on that other side we'd be like I don't know, 50 or 60 feet from the pool. Right. So it served as two purposes. One, to tie in the block wall, and I pinned it to that block wall. I mean, I've got rebar and 160 bags of concrete in that wall. Uh, and then, um, aesthetically, it fits with the, uh, the pool design. I see. Yeah, I'm seeing it in the picture. Yeah. I would have rather had it on the left side, but then I would have been five feet off the setback. Yeah. Any other questions for the applicant? At this time, we'd like to open the floor for public comment. Anybody has anything? Okay. At this time, go ahead. I have a question for you. Yeah, I do. I have another question for the applicant. Go ahead now. Did you take your song? Go ahead now. Uh, um, I don't think, did we have any kind of an aerial? picture of this. I'm, I'm trying to get a feel for your rear neighbor, which you have listed as Bell. That's, is that part of Bell Memorial Park? Is that part of the oh, baseball yeah. if, you, if you walk through uh, the back of the property behind me and go to the left, it'll take you right to the parking lot. of. Uh, I can hear them at night in the okay. summertime so they're having an event. Yeah. So there's no neighbor to your immediate rear, the, the no. line that you're encroaching. Uh, Scott, here's a picture. It's, it's in our yeah. package. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just couldn't remember. I'm sorry. That scene. Good. Okay. So your side neighbors are okay, and, and there really is no rear neighbor is what, what I'm saying. Well, the rear neighbor is that uh, Mr. Park. Anastasi, I think it is. I talked to him last night. That's when he signed the paperwork. He wanted to come. He said, look, I'll come if you want. He said, he, right. he's the guy that wanted to sell me, though, if I had to buy but, some property. But he actually faces way out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bell he's on Road. the other street. He's on actually Bell Park, where the park is. His yeah. house faces that house. Okay. <laughs> yep, I see it on the aerial map. Any other statement you'd like to make, sir? No, I mean, you know, again, I, I want to apologize because I know I, I got a little zealous, but when I got back from that funeral, I was a little, my mind wasn't right. And to see the house like that, I, I, I was like wishing I never bought the house, to be honest with you. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, any questions for the staff from the board members? Yes, sir. I do have one question. Um, Angela, during the, the 
one of the requirements the staff has is that this applicant shall obtain permits for the pool pavilion and required pool fence. During that process, would staff be reviewing an impervious surface and drainage plans along with that? Some of the work will be shown on the building permits. I don't think typically he's required to show all of the drainage work on the building permit, which is why I made the condition for the site plan, just so our engineer could look at it and make sure it's okay. The work is small enough, the area disturbed is small enough, he doesn't need an LDP, but I just, you know, to be on the safe side, wanted our city engineer to look at it. Well, my reasoning in asking that question is this owner bought a piece of property, not realizing the inherent issues with that property. He would not want that to be passed to the next homeowner. In other words, we're creating a new issue by having additional impervious. Well, right. Well, yeah, I mean, I think he's probably fine with the impervious. I just wanted to make sure it's not making it worse for the person next door or across the street or whatever. Okay. So that will generally be reviewed by staff during the permitting process? He's not required to submit engineer drawings? I would like it to be. You would like it to be. So back to then, you know, Walt's question, is it reasonable to put a deadline if staff is expecting engineer drawings? And, you know, they don't even necessarily need to be engineered, just something drawn to scale, shown correctly where everything is. So with that in mind, Mr. Chair, could we ask the applicant if he's prepared with that level of detail? Absolutely. Could you come back up, sir, please? So you heard the interaction here. Are you prepared to have a level of detail in the next seven to ten days based on what we just discussed to scale drawings? As far as? I didn't really hear. For your permitting, will you be prepared with drawings to scale for your pool, pavilion, and fence permits? Yeah, I have it all ready to go tomorrow. To scale? Yes. Okay. When you say to scale, I'm not an architect, but I mean. Well, this survey is not to scale. It was submitted. I have big ones. I have big ones. Is that what you're telling me? I don't understand what to scale means. Who did your survey for you? I paid someone to have the survey. Then it ought to be to scale, though. Yeah, for this survey. The property survey. Preston Hitchcock, he's with Solar. That's the name of the company that you gave us? No, but Preston Hitchcock. Yeah, I think the survey of the property itself is fine. We just needed a more accurate location for the pool and the pool pavilion and the walls and that sort of thing. So you're just saying dimension those? Well, I'm not 100% sure they're shown exactly. Currently not. Yeah. This won't work. That's what I'm getting at. I just wanted a good overall picture of what's out there. This is what we have in our packet, which is your survey with the pool drawn in by hand with no dimensions on that. Do you have something more detailed than that, such that staff can be reviewing specific property line measurements to where you're looking at putting features? I think I need to see the deck as well because we're interested. In other words, I can draw it. You just want it to scale as close as I can get it where everything's going. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's what's going to be required of you in order for your permit to be approved. So I want to make it crystal clear what's going to be expected of this applicant for this permit to be reviewed and approved, especially if we're going to put in deadlines. Or deadlines? What's the purpose of that? Yeah, I personally don't think we need to put a deadline in because if he doesn't do it, he can't go forward. So he'd have to tear everything down. So I don't see a reason to put a deadline. I mean, it's just my opinion. I just encourage him to do it in the next couple weeks. But why is there a time frame? Why are we doing that? Because it's his time frame. It's his project. He's the homeowner. It's a procedure and a process that we want to ensure are followed. He told me he was going to do it in seven days. Oh, no, I wish I was swimming. I wish I was dinner. You can come over to my house. I'm just around the corner. Thank you. That's all for my questions. Do you cook? Any other questions for the applicant? Any other questions for staff? 
At this time, I'd like to close the public hearing. Thank you very much. At this time, we, I'd like to open the floor for a motion. Mr. Recook. I'd like to make a motion for V10-006 uh, to allow an accessory structure, a pool pavilion to encroach into the minimum rear setback, no greater than uh, 10 feet encroachment with the conditions that uh, the applicant shall obtain permits for the pool pavilion and required pool fence. Uh, they will uh, need to submit a new application for the pool permit. The permit fees for the pool and pavilion shall be doubled due to starting work without a permit. Number two, as part of the pool, uh, excuse me, as part of the permit process, the applicant shall submit a survey accurately showing the location of the pool, stone patio area, pavilion, and river rock drainage. And number three, the material for the pool pavilion shall match the existing house. The reason for the uh, recommendation for approval is due to the topography and the location uh, of the home, minimizes the areas available for the uh, pool pavilion plus the pool pavilion is working into using one of the existing retaining walls as part of the uh, structure and therefore uh, is proven to be a benefit for both the building as well as for the uh, shed. And that's my recommendation. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion. Mr. Chair. I did want to clarify one thing. It is a, it's a 40-foot encroachment, not a 10-foot encroachment. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought it was 10-foot. Yeah, I thought it was a maximum of 10-foot encroachment. So you're saying it's a 40-foot encroachment. Yeah, they're 10 feet off the line. It's 10 foot off the line. Okay, I'm sorry. I misspoke. So no greater than 40 feet. You'd like to amend that? Correct. Yes, sir. No Thank more you. than 40 feet. If that's I was going to move to amend. Now, any other discussion? I would, uh, again, uh, support it based on the not offending the spirit and intent because the Spirit intent is separation of um, neighbors, uh, giving neighbors distance from each other. They're, the neighbor behind him is so far away, it really is uh, not germane to the, to the issues. So I would say in that sense, it does not offend the spirit and intent of the ordinance of the, of the setback. Any other discussion? So the motion before us is to approve V10-006 to allow an accessory structure, a pool pavilion to encroach into the minimum rear yard setback no greater than 40 feet with the following conditions. Number one, the applicant shall obtain permits for the pool, pavilion, and required pool fence. He will need to submit a new application for the pool permit. Permit fees for the pool and pavilion shall be doubled to the work starting without a permit. Number two, as part of the permit process, the applicant shall submit a survey accurately showing location of the pool, stone patio area, pavilion, and river rock drainage. And number three, materials for the pool pavilion shall match existing house. All in favor, please raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Pass five zero. Thank you and good luck. You bet. No more work without permits, please. <laughs> okay. This time I'd like to present V10-007 to allow the rear of townhouse units to exceed 25% cement siding. Angela, will you please present? Certainly. V10007. The site located at the corner of Different Parkway, Morris Road, and Webb Road is a townhome residential development consisting of 32.029 acres. The property, Different Green, is located in the State Route 9 overlay and is zoned MIX, mixed used, per RZ0522. 
The development is slated for 244 townhome units, 55 of which are currently built and occupied. The developer, Bowen Family Homes, obtained a modification in December of 2009, ZM09003, allowing them to change 28 lots from rear entry alleyway units to front entry units. Bowen states that the intent was to introduce a new product type that would complement the community while appealing to a set of buyers that were not currently served by the market. Since the approval of the modification, Boeing has continued its commitment to the development of the community through several investment decisions, including the continuation of the street pavement in the next phase of the development. Staff notes that the similar front entry garage units have been built directly to the north of this development at the Views and Park at Morris Lake. This may promote a cohesive transition between developments. The existing townhomes are three-story, two-car garage rear entry units with a brick finish on all four sides. The new two-car garage front entry units will be located on lots 136 through 163 per the revised November 24, 2009 site plan. The majority of the front entry units back up to a 20-foot retaining wall or detention pond. Bowen family Bowen Homes propose, proposes to finish these units with brick on the front and sides while finishing the rear of the units with hardy plank cement siding. Only two end units will be visible from the adjacent road. As a condition of ZM0903, Bowen agreed to install additional landscaping at the north entrance of Morris Road as depicted in the detailed landscape plan received by the Community Development Department on November 24, 2009. Said landscaping shall be installed prior to a certificate of occupancy being issued for lots 136 through 148 or as approved by the City of Milton Arborist. All newly planted trees shall be 4-inch caliper in size. Section 64, 1095, sections P and Q of the City of Milton Zoning, zoning Ordinance state, the exterior wall materials of all non-residential buildings and townhouse, duplex, and multifamily buildings consist of a minimum of 75% per vertical wall plane of the following, brick or natural stone. Accent building materials for all non-residential buildings and also townhouse, duplex, and multifamily units are limited to a maximum of 25% hardy plane. The applicant proposes exterior walls of 100% cement siding, such as Hardy Plank. Therefore, a variance is required. Design Review Board Courtesy Review. A courtesy review was performed by the City of Milton Design Review Board on June 1, 2010. The board offered the following comments. Uh, reducing brick is not aesthetically pleasing. Brick is the better option, but reducing brick on the rear is not an unreasonable request since the back of most units will not be visible. Uh, concerned about the issues with existing homeowners who will be anxious that the change in materials will lower the value of their homes and would prefer to see homes with reduced would prefer to see homes with reduced brick rather than nothing at all. Additional department comments. The staff held a focus meeting on June 1, 2010 at which the following comments were provided. Building plan review, site plan review, arborist and DOT all had no issues. Standards for consideration. The approval of a variance is based on the following considerations. Relief, if granted, would not offend the spirit or intent of the ordinance. There are such extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property that the literal, literal or strict application of the ordinance would create an unnecessary hardship due to size, shape, or topography, or other extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions not caused by the variance application. Relief, if granted, would not cause a substantial detriment to the public good and surrounding properties, that the public safety, health, and welfare are secured, and that substantial justice is done. The applicant addresses the considerations as follows. If the variance is granted, in this case, we respectfully think that it will not offend the spirit of the ordinance. This case is a situation where these units have limited visibility in the area where the variance is requested, and the strict application of the ordinance creates an unnecessary hardship to the applicant. 
If this variance is granted, it will not cause any detriment to the public good in surrounding areas. The material we propose is superior in appearance, durability, and long-term value than the vinyl siding and other siding treatments of surrounding properties. Lastly, we request that this application be viewed in the spirit of it being a benefit to the public safety, health, and welfare of the community. Granting this variance in this limited use allows for lots to become part of the tax base of the city and bring residents to the community by providing a housing option that we currently cannot offer. We have spoken with the current residents and they are in favor of this variance request. They look forward to the growth of their neighborhood. Recommended conditions. Should the board choose to approve this application, staff recommends the following conditions. Number one, reduction of brick finish on rear to 100% hardy plank cement siding is limited to front entry units, lots 136 through 163 per the November 24, 2009 site plan. And two, the rear of each unit shall be painted a dissimilar color as allowed by the state Route 9 overlay. And I have um, a couple of things that I would like to give you in addition to this, um, one is an email from one of the residents, current residents of the Deerfield Green subdivision in um, support of the variance. Thank you. And also I have um, packets from a representative from the uh, brick industry. And this concludes the staff presentation. Any questions for staff on the board? I have a question, yes, sir. The parcel to the north, which is uh, Lant Lantham View Port, is that part of this uh, development or is that a separate development? That's, um, that's part of Morris Lake. Part of Morris Lake. And, and um, do we know the, the construction materials used in that? Um, you have a picture of them, actually. They're. Um, the rears are, I believe that's vinyl siding, and the fronts are, I think, a combination of vinyl and brick. And on page 13, those are the units. Okay, so that's what they're referencing about surrounding vinyl. All right, yes. thank you. Any other questions to the staff? Yes, sir, do Go ahead, sir. Um, my question really deals with this recommendation. Um, when you say the rear of each unit shall be painted a dissimilar color as allowed by the state Route 9 overlay, I guess I'm a little slow on the uptake. When you say dissimilar, that means each unit has a different color? Well, at least not the same color next to each other. Okay, so you're not asking for a Charleston look or something? Right, no, we don't necessarily need eight different colors, but just not adjacent. Jason. Per the overlay, I think the overlay you can spells do it red. Red. Well, the colors, whatever colors they pick, have to meet overlay requirements. Okay. But if it's a, you know, okay. gray, taupe versus okay. gray, gray, gray. And my second question: in the back of units 150, 136 to 150, there's a substantial wall there, and unfortunately, none of the pictures show that wall. Can you tell me how tall that wall is? The wall is shown on page 11. Um, it it slopes upwards. Is that a wall? That's a wall, yeah. That, I tried to get the whole street. So um, I probably have some separate close-ups if you, if you need to see more detail. But that's the whole, that's the whole view of 154 through 136. That's what I was going okay. for. And it, slo it starts at, like, ground level and slopes up to, I think it's 20 feet tall, and then slopes back down to ground level. Okay. And so it is a substantial wall. Mm-hmm. And um, did the arborist, I know he had comments, no comment, but there was a plan submitted that showed landscaping, I guess, that the yeah. applicant uh, referenced, but I noticed that it's not made any part of your recommendation. <laughs> Is well, this something that uh, would be um, something you would normally add, or is this something that's already required, so really is it necessary to be considered part of the condition? You mean the enhanced landscaping for that entrance? Yes. Yeah. It was a condition of the modification, so they have to do it. Okay, so we anyway, need to it's already required. What was so it's already required? Mm -hmm. Condition of the modification, okay. so it's already covered. 
Okay. I just want to be sure that I'm not missing something. Any other questions for staff? This time, would the applicant please come forward and present? You can state your name and address. We would certainly appreciate it. Good evening. My name is Corbett Woods. Okay. Now? Better. I'm sorry. Uh, address 6650 Sugarloaf Parkway. I'm here on behalf of, of the developer uh, who I work for. And as you all know, this project began back in 2006. And the development and the uh, homes that have been built have been well received. From the beginning, we've gotten requests for a different type of use. As we got into the project more in detail and realized the impact of the wall with the alley and the lake, a little pond with the alley and folks backing into it, he began thinking about a, a different use and began meeting with staff, following procedures, uh, filing for modification. And last year it was approved during both the DRB and the uh, council and citizen involvement. We've always represented the back would be a hardy plank material and uh, our neighbors our community residents have always been very supportive of it uh, because the neighborhood stagnated and they're hoping that this will beget more activity um, I, I apologize for coming to you at this point in the process because I mistakenly have thought that it was approved as part of my zoning mod and my DRB reviews way back when but it wasn't as I found out after we purchased our permits so our hardships are, are, as you know, we've already developed a street based on the approval and done our underwriting with is, with the bank and are anxious to begin and, uh, and keep developing our neighborhood, bring more lots into the community. Um, I don't think that it causes a violation of the spirit of the ordinance because of its aesthetic impact on the, on the wall and a landscaped pond. We do have the bulked up landscaping at the entrance down there and intend to plant that this fall in the fall planting season. Right now we wouldn't do it because of the heat. Um, we thought we'd be started by now, but we're not. Um, we've gone out of our way to be upfront with our neighbors and the city about what's going on in the market and the reality is the market. And uh, would really appreciate your support, consideration. There are precedents for this within the overlay district where there are units that are, have been built so, since my modification that have substantial more siding than uh, Hardy Plank siding that we're asking for. Uh, I don't know if that's a consideration or not, but as I saw those going up. Um, I thought, well, gosh, we're going to have nicer units than them. We have lots of brick, and they just have and just a back against the chaining wall that nobody can see. Um, Morris Lake, we've been in communication with them. At times, and they and they know what we're doing. Uh, we've been good neighbors with them as far as keeping mud out of their pond and whatnot. They probably would have talked to us if they had a big issue. And again, our homeowners that live there would be most impacted. Are very supportive. Uh, I have one that wanted to come tonight, but she's at church. Perhaps she's the one that emailed and uh, seems to be a neighborhood spokesman at times. She came to the public to uh, public comments and the public information meeting we had last year in August or September. I'll be happy to answer any questions. I realize there's uh, some opposition to my request, so I'll just hold and come back up, I guess, after you all. We're anxious to be, you know, keep going. And, uh, and hang on just a second. Any yes, questions sir. for the applicant while he's here? Mr. Kilgore? Yes, sir. Um, the only ones that I had questions about were the units on the western end, um, 163 and perhaps even 162 and 161. Will, those, will the backs of those be visible from the units across the street, 191 through say 189. One, I don't know if you're looking at it. I'm sorry, I'll wait for you to catch up there. But I've got it. I have a plan here. Bear with me. I'll open it. Well, I'm only talking about 189, 90, and 91. Just those really those three on the end that would be looking down the backs. Is this, just for a frame of reference, this is at the, this is the left, left edge? The west end. Okay, west right. edge. So the, I'm, I'm asking about 
visibility of units 163 and what make perhaps even 162 and 161 from the units across the street 191 190 189 Oh, okay. One, would those three units be able to see the backs of these, or, or is there going to be landscape material that would that would shield the, the backs of those? Because those, those are the really only ones that I see that are even visible to anything. Right. Um, and it's a good question. Um, those units will be screened with landscaping as we have it around the, lay, the, the pond. You've got a retaining wall there, and you, we've got some uh, evergreen is starting to grow up. Certainly, it'd be unreasonable for me to tell y'all that people couldn't see the top of that unit. Right. Um, however, the focal point of those will be back out over the pond into the buffer between us and the Morris Lake. And then the streetscape on the front of those obviously will be the front entry unit. I mean, the, I'm sorry, the porch and the units we already have. And that will overlook the amenity we're planning to do once we have enough residents to support said amenity. And I imagine that's going to be the focal point of those units. could see the top of them. I don't think it'll be the first thing you're wanting to see. You're going to be focused on your alley to get out and get going. Um, well, I'm just no, I'm, you're right, I'm though. concerned about these property owners and, and whether their units would be mm -hmm. impacted negatively by the fact that they're dissimilar from the people across the street and I everything thought, else is brick and that sort of thing. In our experience, we have a similar condition up the way. and. Uh, where you can see the different units and it hasn't negatively impacted either the absorption or people saying, hey, I'll buy a house, but not this one because I can I don't see this. So I can go on the past on that. Um, you know, I, but we're anxious to get to that point. We have a long way to go to get to there. We're, we're a fifth of the way into this. And the economic hardship is certainly part of our thought process. Can I just a second? Yes. So I, I have two comments, yes. uh, questions for you. Um, I think one of our other boards commented about the potential price impact, and that may be one of the obvious concerns about going to a, a lower, lesser quality building material. Can you um, address that yes. and what price point impact you feel this uh, I'll be glad to have. address that. Um, you're seeing a lot of neighborhoods that where the bank takes back the lots from the builder, from a lack of being able to hang on and pay and whatnot. Those do get parceled back out to investors or whatnot at a, at a reduced rate, usually at the end of a quarter. And um, we've been able to hang on to this entire neighborhood. Uh, will these be as expensive as the first houses we did in here? No way. Will it be more in line with, with the general market? Yes. Then if it's foreclosed and we're gone and somebody else comes in and, uh, you know, candidly is building all a lot that's a third of the price we have on these lots and the bank has right now. Um, the bank supported this, obviously, because they want to see us address this. Um, the reality for the, camp, for the city is we can bring 28 lots on at whatever value to increase to, as far as the tax base, whereas right now it's just raw land. And, uh, I think the granting the variance and us continuing and trying to, as you saw, if you've been through there when you're looking, we were able to get one building going uh, with much uh, interest from the bank, whereas in the past they just said just start. They're big proponents of us getting started on this alternate product type because I think it'll help their absorption and and beget what we've got going on. Um, so hopefully I'm addressing your question. Yeah, it is because it's okay. addressing one of the conditions for our consideration, which is. Uh, relief if granted would not cause a substantial detriment to the public good and surrounding properties. Well, obviously a much lower price point would have that effect. Um, so I appreciate you addressing that. One of the other uh, considerations is uh, it relates to the spirit and intent of the ordinance as well as uh, public safety. So I'd like to do an address from a product standpoint, um, from a uh, sure. purpose and intent of the ordinance of not ha of having brick versus an ulterior product, I'm assuming that's aesthetics would be the purpose or intent, or potentially uh, fire safety, which in this case it looks like there's patio mm -hmm. uh, on the back of these units. So can you address it from a public safety standpoint? 
Well, the material we're going to use is, is a fire safe material. Um, it's used throughout town and everything like that. Um, I don't th I think it impacts the public safety and general welfare in that those are productive pieces of land than vacant land with weeds on them and trash and the undesirables that congregate around those places. Now, luckily, we're close to City Hall, so it's not as motivating for people to go over there and hang out when the police come through there on their way to, to circle the city. But we're not putting something in there as, you know, a vinyl or something like that that's much more, much less flame retardant or safe. Uh, the hardy plank siding is very safe. I imagine we may hear it's not as safe as brick here in a minute, but um, we wouldn't put something out there that we wouldn't be willing to live in. And uh, I think in this case it's fine. And, and again, the, getting the public, the neighborhood more productive for the city's a greater good, in, I think, in this case. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Rico. Um, Mr. Woods, um, uh, from a marketing standpoint, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this or not, but those homes that we're talking about with the uh, hardy plank, mm -hmm. do they have negative uh, features that perhaps are uh, not as good in quality of location compared to some of the other uh, portions of the townhomes. If, if I could touch, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to try to guess what, what you're asking. Interior features are. You, you can ask him to clarify. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't want to insult him, but are you talking about like the interior features? Will they be of less quality than the other units in the neighborhood? Well, I guess, you know, I, I, try I've been enough in the <laughs> development business like like you. Mm -hmm. When I look at these houses backing up to a 20 foot wall. Mm -hmm. And then also looking at these other ones that are looking at this beautiful detention pond, and I mean that with a little parentheses with possibly sick at the uh, end of it, that they're not exactly what I'm going to call the uh, best location of your project. That more than likely you're going to be selling this by price more than aesthetics. Is that probably a true statement? I think it's going to be a little bit countered by the fact that we do have people that want to live with a front-loaded product. Um, they're all going to have the hardwoods and the, and the granites and the things that we have in our normal homes. Um, I do think they would be very heavily price marketed if we have not changed to get the alleys off the wall and the pond. I mean, I can see somebody sure. texting and driving and calling to blame me for hitting the wall right. at 2015. But hopefully it'll be quicker. But I, I think that they'll, it'll mix uh, in that there is some demand for that unit. Uh, I think the community looks looks good. I'm biased. Uh, but we've done a good job of working with staff and city and have always gone out of our way. Anytime they've asked us to do something, generally we're, we're right on it, even in our limited staffing. Second question is, mm -hmm. I too, like you, started driving around the communities in that area. And I noticed that, uh, uh, what have we got here? Spring Valley, Deer Valley, Bethany Creek, some of those have not just hardy plank, but also vinyl sidings, not only on the rear of their units, but over the majority of the units in some cases. And these are what I would prefer to say, these are single family, in some cases some were townhomes, and these are much uh, different neighborhoods. And, uh, and again, uh, they have much greater percentage than 25% than, than this. I then looked at the apartment complex across the way compared that looked at some of these in these townhomes over here and looking at the mix and I look at your product and there's a lot more brick mm -hmm. than some of those and uh, I'm just trying to make sure that when we're talking about blending into the community and, and making sure we're not creating problems I'm just trying to make sure that uh, am I am I missing some of it I think Bethany these are all in Bethany Bend by the way not far from here but uh, these are what I would consider even uh, higher priced homes than, than this, but uh, again, I, I just want to make sure um, that if I'm creating a, a difference in our community that I'm not so bringing it down that mm -hmm. that there's not other areas that are going to be impacted. When I look around, it seems like there's some of these other areas have siding and, and like you said, vinyl siding, not just uh, hardy plank. Yes, there's, um, remember that we're talking about less than 10% of our community 
And we got a real vested interest in making it look as good as it can and building as nice as we can because, you know, ideally we can fill back into it um, and continue on with the alley loaded product. We love the alley loaded product. Um, and we want to be here and be a success or we would have quit. And one last question. Mm -hmm. Going on what Mr. Kilgore mentioned, and you may not be able to tell me, but um, those units 163 through 159 that could possibly be looked at by those other units, is it potentially possible that those are one of the first units you build? And the reason I mention that, 163 through 159, if you build them, and if people buy overlooking them, it's not like they're going to be surprised. That it's going to be there before those units are built. Um, I, I can address that question. We will, we have um, too hastily, uh, as it turns out, purchased permits for the four unit building, uh, which is number 156 through 158. And our logic there was a couple of things, but some life safety issues, multiple points of ingress, egress, blah, 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 uh, different. That's the wrong thing to say in public hearing. So, different points of ingress, egress, and in a four-unit building to get started. Uh, obviously, um, you know you're right. If people come in and, and want it, then they're going to continue to. Um, had we known where this was going to head, we would have not bought our permits. But that's uh, we'll know pretty much. We've already had interest in people talking about it and, it, and, and uh, anxious well, to see. But if I put a condition saying that that uh, the building group 160, 159 through 163 shall be built before uh, the building units 150, yes, 186 to 191. Yes. That way that takes care of yeah. the potential where where basically that building will be in fact, in place, and if those people buy those units, they'll see what's there. It's not right. like they have to guess and go, oh, my God, when did that get approved? They they won't have that ability because it's already there. It, they it, would see it, and they could either accept it or not. And that was our logic in working with, you know, as we figured this out. We went to the homeowners. Um, it will be absorbed before we get to there as far as if people never want to buy those, then that was our, our bad decision. There'll be many more buildings built with the alleys uh, to fill in the rest of the streetscape in the neighborhood as, as the market moves forward, hopefully more speedily, but we're just doing the best we can. Yes, sir. Um, I, I appreciate that line of thinking. It's kind of in the same direction I was thinking, but I was thinking just a little skew here. Um, what, what would be the, uh, the possibility, or have you considered um, going ahead and, and, and doing brick on the back of 159 through 163 because if you did that there would be no visibility of any of the things that you're asking for variance for and we could you know we could certainly say it doesn't offend the spirit and intent of the ordinance because they're completely hidden from view you know the neighbors have trees they're a lower grade product um, you know, to me, that would be ideal. We, you know, we can we can tick off all four of our considerations because it certainly wouldn't offend the spirit. It's not visible. The extraordinary and excuse me, extraordinary exceptional situation is they're not visible. Um, you know, we've already addressed the other two with the um, detriment to public good and public safety and all that. So we can kind of check those off if, or at least I could in my mind. I shouldn't speak for my fellow board members. I'm sorry, um, but. I would feel really comfortable if we could maybe eliminate those five units from the from the variance or, or put a, a condition on the, the variance as requested to say that those would be bricked, but the, the remainder would be. What, would that be? Uh, how how would you respond to that as a, as a condition? I would. would be doable. It's it's certainly considerable. Um, I'd like to go back and kind of since I am pretty much. At this point, yes, I work for Bowen Family Homes, but at the end of the day, we all work for the bank. Um, I'd prefer, if it's your druthers, to remove that five-unit building from my request with the understanding that I'll go figure it out in the next month and 
and come back because then I'm approving those 23 units. Uh, I don't have an infra building permit. I think that I can get them on board with that. Um, I just need to go talk to them and uh, glad to do it. So, so you're saying that you'd, you'd rather go back and restate the request? I'd rather tell them that, hey, this is a request. We think it's reasonable. We're willing to do it. Are you going to fund our draws when we draw for the back wall of the building? Okay. Rather than us approve it with that. Well, I'd like condition. to approve 23 of the 28 um, because we do have the one that, that's fair. I just, given the way that the, the bank treatment of us has gone, I don't want to be back here crying poverty in a, in a month saying they turned me down, they turned me down, they turned me down. I'm going to have to build that one last. Um, I think we, I think they'll be fine with it. It's just I've learned the hard way I need to ask. Um, however, I don't want to delay where I've already purchased permits from that four-unit building or the rest of it. Um, I want to be able to get going. And I don't know if you can conditionally approve everything except those five, and I'll, and I'll get it uh, worked out. Well, I certainly have no problem with that. The alternative is what Walt's suggesting, which is build those first so that people buying any of those we're, units that are visible buy it with full knowledge of, right. as those buildings are and we're They won't be a surprise building. Um, and I, I anticipate that those people, when we get to that point, will have the pool. Uh, and that's going to be their focal point that live, that make a buying decision there. Where's the pool? Going? It is to your... The front door of those units you're talking to me about mm -hmm. is not there right now. If you drove over there, there's a big pile of dirt to your this left hand bad. as you drive down the road. <laughs> ah, gotcha. You're saying these people are going to be looking here and not looking back. Well, it's but still the back of those units. It is. I see what you're saying. It absolutely I is. I see what you're saying. But that's where they're going to, I mean. Yeah. yeah. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Any other question for the applicant? And those are front entry, the ones that back up to the pool or front end? No, sir. Those are the, the alley-loaded products. They are alley. Okay. So really, I could have problems with people in that unit, regardless of the backs, not wanting to live next to the alley. And the alley's already cut in, and that will be disclosed as well. There's, we try hard to not surprise them, because we get the complaints. Now we have so few people, I get the complaints. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, I appreciate y'all's consideration of questions, and I'll, if you have any questions after we hear from our friends of the Brick Council, I'll be glad to answer any more. Thank at, this, you. at this time, we'd like to open up the floor for public comment. If there is any, please come forward and state your name and address. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Patrick Burns. Um, uh, address is 3251 Chestnut, o Chestnut Oaks Road, uh, Marietta, Georgia, uh, 30062. Um, I'm here tonight representing the Brick Industry Association. Uh, we're a trade association that represents over 17 brick manufacturers across the southeast, uh, including distributors. There's many, many of those distributors are here in the city of Milton, are residents of the city of Milton. Um, you want to talk, we talk about economy, um, sure, it, 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 it's tough for all of us, including our industry. And um, we have the same kind of economic duress uh, that is uh, being mentioned by um, our applicant tonight. Um, we worked with the uh, city of Milton back in 2007 on the State Route 9 overlay district. Worked, worked with your staff. They were wonderful. Um, we are familiar with what the intent of the ordinance was. Um, and we thank you for what y'all have done in putting this overlay district in. It's going to be a great benefit to your community long term um, and create a sustainable one uh, for your children and grandchildren. Now, the, the concern we have is um, whether that, that overlay is going to be followed. Um, and, and I think, you know, there has been some, some variances. Uh, we come tonight to express our opposition uh, to the variance request uh, by Bowen Family Homes of Duluth um, to replace brick and stone uh, with a, the product known as Hardy Plank um, on the exterior rear of townhomes uh, in the existing uh, Deerfield Green subdivision. Um, we feel like this violates the intent and spirit of the city's zoning ordinance and State Route 9 overlay district um, that specifies a minimum of 75% brick or stone per vertical plane uh, for non-residential buildings, townhomes, duplex, and multi-home units. 
Uh, just to be clear, Hardy Plank is not a masonry product. Um, and it does not have the same benefits uh, to your community as brick and stone. Um, townhomes made of brick simply last longer, their property values are higher, um, and they expand your local tax base, which I think is what is, is good for the entire city. Um, a recent study by the University of Michigan, uh, Talbot School of Planning and Architecture, which is in your packets, uh, really states the economic benefits and economic development benefits of having a masonry planning policy and enforcing it. Um, this puts you at a distinct advantage over your neighbors, which too are, are considering and adopting these policies. Um, another important note, uh, fire study, um, we did a fire study um, with the Southwest Research Institute that looked at brick versus other materials. Um, and that is in your packet as well. Um, brick was the only material that achieved a one hour fire rating, which is what the ASTM standards recommend. Um, vinyl and hardy plank did not meet that one hour fire rating. So particularly when you're in a dense situation, uh, fire is of a, con a concern. We're working right now in the Raleigh market and we're seeing a good deal of problems with vinyl and hardy plank as it relates to the issue of fire and I think it was an excellent point about where the, the siding is going to be put. It's going to be put on porches where there's barbecues and, and, and whatnot. Um, homeowners in the existing neighborhood, I think it's a very important to consider their input and to consider their concerns. Um, they're justified um, in being concerned about their property values. Uh, this will impact their property values. Um, and will also they're justified in concerns about public safety. Um, the, uh, the, one of the subdivisions that's mentioned, the views of Morris Lake, uh, I think, I believe that's as a comparison. Uh, if you Google what's on the market there, the price point there is 181. The current price point for Deerfield is 239. Now, I think it's important to consider the impact of 24% differentiation of, on those folks that live in that subdivision. I would be concerned about that. <laughs> um, infill neighbor development is an important um, issue across this area and across the southeast. Um, the standards that were put in place when a subdivision was, is, was initially developed should be kept. It's unfair, it's an unfair burden um, to the residents to have to have to resell their house at a lower value than they bought it. Um, but ultimately, this is your decision. Um, it's what you, you want uh, to leave behind. Um, if you, you know, an ordinance that's enforced, uh, an overlay district that's enforced, has a lot of benefits. Um, you may think this is an isolated decision, but um, you're setting a precedent that will be keenly followed by other builders, other developers from out of town. Um, and if they see, you know, continued grants of variances, they will uh, see that as a green light, that this is not an ordinance that has much teeth. So I, I encourage you to think uh, long term. And uh, I thank you for your time and uh, be happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Um, I did bring um, just a, a photo of our fire test itself um, where you can see the, the hardy plane versus versus bread. Um, and I think that that's a worthwhile consideration as far as public safety. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Burns, what's the difference in cost between um, what do you typically are seeing for cost of brick uh, per hundred square feet versus, uh, versus hardy plank or vinyl? What are we looking at difference in cost? In the cost the, for, for commercial, there is no cost differentiation in the other products. Now, you know, it, with the brick versus vinyl, sure, brick is more expensive. Brick is uh, more expensive than hardy. However, the differentiation, in my opinion, and I, I think you talk to any builders out, it's not a significant differentiation for a, that causes an economic hardship. Um, and uh, you know, also the cost to the homeowner long term 
um, of having a hardy house versus a brick house. Uh, there will be substantial maintenance costs, energy costs um, that, that will be substantial. Um, there's a lot of savings in having a brick home. Not only does your property values appreciate 7%, um, but you save a lot in energy costs. And, uh, and I think those are the kind of homes that you'd want to have in Milton, where folks will, will see an increase in value of 7% and not a depreciation of their property values of around 24. So, Mr. Burns, the cost difference between hardy plank and brick is? It, it depends on the market. It depends on the availability of, of the brick. And uh, I can tell you there's certainly an enormous supply of brick right now. Um, it's around. Uh, but I, I want to be careful and not misquote you uh, a, a, a cost because well, uh, a lot of it depends on where and how the builder is getting the, uh, the brick. Right. Well, I know uh, uh, I'm a big proponent of brick. My yes. house is maybe 90% brick. I do have some hardy plank. Mm -hmm. I do have siding. I have cedar siding. But uh, I, I think that all mixes of product is also what the overlay district is about. It's not just one product, it's a mixture of products to give a mixture of looks on a property so that it's not one straight Georgian style brick all the way across. Now, of course, I know you see nothing wrong with that, that design at all, but at the same time, uh, I know we want a matter of uh, in our overlay stone, brick, siding, uh, it's a mixture of products, so it's not always just one product from what I understand of the overlay. If I'm saying something wrong, please stop me. But I, I believe that we, we want that, and this is a situation where uh, I don't think we're trying to set a precedent all, at all, and if that's what's coming across, please excuse us, but uh, it's not my intent to approve something that would be rampant throughout the community, I assure you. But. Uh, I strongly commend you and your whole association for coming here and, and uh, promoting your product here. Uh, uh, obviously, it's a, it's a great thing, and, and we appreciate it. But I personally, uh, you know, I'm a big supporter of what you've done, and uh, I wish I got better prices in some of the brick walls I built, but uh, that's something I've got to take up with my supplier. But uh, anyway, uh, it's, a, it's a great product. and. Uh, I understand exactly what you're saying. Sure. And, and we certainly, you know, and I think being in, involved in the intent, the intent of the ordinance when it was drafted was certainly to allow for choice, and I think that's what we're doing here. Oh, sure. Um, you know, there uh, there is a 25% variance that, that allows for, you know, accent materials and, um, and other materials out there. And I would encourage you to think, uh, it too, is that just because it is masonry does not limit its architectural variety. Um, there's all kinds of different um, architects today that are utilizing brick and stone and, and creating some wonderful buildings. I mean, we, you know, if you go down the corridor right now where you have the new buildings going in, uh, many of them have a, a quite a bit of variety, and it's um, it's just what what do you want? You know, do you want quality or you know, it's just you know, what the, what the issue is really. Any other public comment? Thank you. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thanks very much. You're certainly welcome. Sir, at this time, you have an opportunity to, to for a rebuttal or for closing statement. I'd like to put you a little bit at ease about our neighboring community. Um, they certainly do have a lower price point. Yeah. Can't argue that. They're, they're one car, in some cases, no car garages. And on average, 500 square feet smaller. They're going to be they're going to be cheaper. Um, and just appreciate your consideration on it. We are uh, building in excess of the zoning condition throughout the project in this limited, isolated use. We're, we're hopeful for your support and uh, answer any any more questions. But uh, I'm a terrible talker, so I'll just. Any other questions for you? This time, I'd like to close public comment. Any questions from the board to staff at this time? Yes, sir. I'll make a motion. Oh, at this time.
I'd like to open the floor for a motion. I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve V10-007 to allow the rear of townhouse units to exceed 25% cement siding um, with the following conditions. Uh, reduction of brick finish on rear to 100% hardy plank cement siding is limited to front entry units, lots 136 through 163 per the November 24, 2009 site plan. The rear of each unit shall be painted a dissimilar color as allowed by the state uh, Route 9 overlay. The reason for um, this motion to approve is this uh, applicant has shown that they meet all four conditions of um, consideration. consideration. Uh, one being relief of granted would not offend the spirit or intent of the ordinance with these units being uh, largely facing to uh, retaining walls and not visible. They meet that condition as well as the second uh, extraordinary and exceptional situations which are not visible. Relief of granted would not cause a substantial detriment as was uh, pointed out by the applicant from a price point standpoint the quality of the product and the public uh, safety, health and welfare are secured. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Rickert. Any discussion? Um, uh, discussion, uh, you did not include the condition that units one, I'm sorry, 186 through 191 be constructed before the five units on the Correct, unit. and I felt like understanding the constraints that this applicant has in dealing with the bank, that that might create some unnecessary hardship. It, I, I felt that the applicant has shown that they will um, do their duty in full disclosure with any potential uh, homeowners. So I didn't feel that was a necessary uh, constraint to put on the applicant. You can uh, amend if, if you feel. Um, well, I, I'm considering, you, you just gave me a third option, which is could we include a condition that the, the, any purchasers of 186 through 191 be fully Disclosed. Yeah, be, that that be fully disclosed, and I don't know how we would enforce that. So I'm, I'm, I'm let's make that amendment. Considering they have to put in the closing papers in the first instance. Yeah. Which I actually, actually, how the attorney this, is suggesting that we could uh, that could be enforced. It could be. Yeah, I mean, it could be applied. The enforcement would be difficult, okay. but a violation could be proven. So okay, can well, you I'll suggest some wording that. that would make it? Um, easy to apply some good legal wording to you know, uh, move to amend to include full disclosure of the construction for these units uh, uh, um, struggling with wording how about re require uh, um, a copy of the variance for those uh, particular units with whichever units you're concerned about yeah, one, one nineteen through one thirty nine. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one eighty six to one ninety one. Yep. One eighty six yeah. to one ninety one. Require copy variance between the one eighty six to one ninety one. And you would require be disclosed at closing or something like the that. The variance um, that we're adopting today mm -hmm. would be disclosed and included in Actually, disclosed in writing of, at the uh, sale on lots 186 through 191. Would you accept that wording? Well, I'll, I'll propose it. I'll, I'll move to amend. To, we add a con oh, I'll move to amend that we add a condition that um, we that the uh, applicant be required to sign. Okay, good. <laughs> Require a copy of the variance for units 186 through 191 be disclosed in writing at the sale of these units. Yeah. 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 I'd second that. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Yes, sir. Um, again, I think you've created a situation where, you know, if the house is built, they see what they've got. We don't and know that the house is going to be built. Well, that's, that's where I think 
that's why I was making my recommendation for for stating that that you know these that building get built before those other buildings get built. And that way, there's no doubt that the people see what they're going to see. And in my cases, there's no reason for your letter if it's built before the other units are built because they'll see what they that it is. So I I, I guess uh, and I'm of the opinion that. Uh, you know, at least if I was going to do this project, I would probably build those units first just because it has a better view than looking into a retaining wall. But uh, but again, uh, I just think that, you know, if we're going to make a condition, it's going to be a lot easier to enforce that condition saying, you know, units 155 through 156 would be 90% uh, constructed before the builder uh, can obtain a permit uh, for units 156 through 199. That puts, that puts a lot of constraints on him with, with, with the bank relationship, I think, is what Mr. Chernick was trying to avoid. Well, I, I don't, I, again, I, I think oh, really? that, uh, <laughs> okay. you know, if it's, it's, yeah, it's one half a dozen yeah, the other. Yeah, but, let's, uh, let's vote on his amendment. But, uh, again, I think that uh, I, I read again this letter from the homeowner we and uh, and that I won't that's take any offense if you vote my amendment. Let's just vote. Let's just vote. We got it. Uh, we're going to vote on the amendment. To require a copy of the variance for units 186 through 191 disclosed in writing at the sale and closing of units. All in favor of that amendment, please raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your right hand. It fails five to zero. Is there anything you'd like to add to your original motion? No, thank you. Okay. So now let's vote on the original. You don't want to have more discussion? No. Okay. Well, no. Okay. More discussion. Okay. Yeah. More discussion. I thought I just heard Mr. Recook say that he wanted this amendment. Well, what, what to but here's require my, that these units be built first. What I'm saying is, to me, I would prefer that to be done. But again, I believe that those units are going to be built before those units are. So that's why I'm not, I'm not real worried about that issue. I guess I never fully explained myself. They're more desirable. I, 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 I think they're much more desirable. I think they'll be built well before this other one. And in my view, that that it's not going to be. Uh, I think the market's going to drive that process to get done. And I know we're worried about it, but I, I'm not as worried as uh, perhaps you are. I think uh, it, it'll stay in the past that those will get built, and that's why I didn't want to make that a condition. And I'm sorry. I'm, no, I, no, I didn't no. mean to confuse uh, you. I'm just trying to get a feel. No, no, no for I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't really explain myself. Well, that's cool. Any other discussion? I'm fine with my original motion. Okay. <laughs> Let's vote on the original motion. The motion on the table is to approve V10-007 to allow the rear of townhouse units to exceed 25% cement siding with the following conditions. Number one, Reduction of brick finish on rear to 100% hardy plank cement siding is limited to front entry, un front entry units, lots 136 through 163 for the November 24, 2009 site plan. And B, the rear of each unit shall be painted a dissimilar color as allowed by the State Route 9 overlay as applicant has met all four conditions set forth by the City of Milton. All in favor, please raise your right hand. All opposed, same side. It passed 5 0. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And again, I want to commend the Brick Institute. Keep on pushing, guys. You're doing a great job. So I appreciate what you do and, and uh, continue making our, our world a little bit better. Any, any other business? Angela, <coughs> anything? Anything? Um, just so you know, you don't, you currently don't, well, you don't have anything on the agenda for July, so. There you go. There you go. Really? The whole day? The whole month. Do we, do we have a motion to adjourn since I can't do it? Make a motion to adjourn. Anybody want to second the motion to adjourn? I second it. There we go. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Thank you all. Thank you.